Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I want to talk to you about the latest episode of Batwoman. It was called Toxic. And as it starts with Ivy by her side, Mary kills the CEO of a health insurance company, at least she seems, it seems that she does, who had been in the habit of denying people coverage for needed treatments. And then once again, heals Ivy, who is still, I guess, not at full strength. Alice then randomly shows up at Ryan's bar and tells her, as well as the rest of Team Batwoman, that Mary whammied her and that if they want to stop Ivy and Mary, they need to start by taking Renee away from Ivy because that's her source of strength, I guess, her inner strength. Ryan and Alice then confront Renee about her having scammed Alice, which we know now that she did when she said, you know, track down all these artifacts and you'll be free to go while holding one of the artifacts back to prevent her from doing that. Ivy then explains to Mary that a toxic factory killed her brother and that she wants Mary to help her drown Gotham's industry in a river of tears by taking out the dam. Renee is brought back to the bar and while there, Sophie confronts her about secretly keeping the joy buzzer and Batwoman awesomely answers the call of the bat signal by doing another one of her epic landings off of a zip line on top of GCPD to find her mom there with the buzzer seeking the return of Marcus from Batwoman because remember Batwoman has Marcus on ice and it seems that Jada doesn't know that Batwoman is Ryan which I guess I hadn't realized but that's the case it would seem. And before the scene is over, Batwoman convinces her to let her try to find a way to make the buzzer work so that they can cure Marcus, and she ends up leaving. We find out that it turns out that Ivy's plan would kill lots of innocent people. So Mary objects to it, causing Ivy to dramatically drain her and incapacitate her in the process. The next thing we see is that Batwoman and Alice are driving around in the Batmobile with Alice behind the wheel, which I wasn't really sure about. They appear to be doing this so they can catch up to the ambulance that's carrying the alien Mary, but the Batmobile has autopilot last I knew, so if the plan, well, we know what the plan was. The plan was to catch the ambulance and then either stop it or jump to it from the Batmobile and take Mary out of the back of it so that they could, you know, wake her up and, and, and and help and heal her from whatever poison ivy did to her but the way they carried out the scene they she has alice drive the batmobile so that she can do this i think the reason they did it was so that they could have the conversation that takes place in the batmobile which is actually pretty cool it involves them listening in on a conversation between sophie and renee during which it comes out that sophie was only with renee because she couldn't be with her first choice at least according to renee her first choice being Ryan, which Alice kind of teases Batwoman about, before they do in fact, as I said, catch up to the ambulance. And Batwoman leaps over to the ambulance out of the Batmobile through the roof, which was pretty cool, making them stop and surrender Mary. Later, when Batwoman tells Renee that she's going after Ivy at the dam, Renee tells her that the only chance she has of succeeding at that would be if she has Mary with her, if Ivy's at full strength. The team then revives Mary and tells her that she's being used by Ivy, but she refuses to see it, even when Alice confirms it. And then Ryan has to let her know that she in fact killed that guy in the woods last episode to sort of stop her in her tracks and get her to listen. She of course doesn't want to believe this, but she eventually realizes that it's true. Meanwhile, Ivy goes about destroying the dam and Mary arrives offering to give Ivy a boost by allowing her to drain her a little bit, but it's a ruse to get Ivy to absorb a compound that's been injected into Mary that will weaken her, which Mary went along with, even though it could kill her to have that in her. After she absorbs it, Batwoman confronts her and they fight in the middle of a very watery dam area. So there's water all around, water pouring in, water on the ground, and they're you know having like a jujitsu martial arts kind of fight in the uh, dam facility and it was actually pretty cool. Before long, Batwing arrives and is about to shut down the implosion at the mine, but he's quickly grabbed by vines and he has flashbacks of various traumas that he's experienced recently, which kind of paralyze him, but he sort of 
reminds himself that he's not going to let his PTSD stop him from doing what he needs to do. He's not going to let things that his dad might have said to him hold him back. And he breaks out of this, this sort of mind freeze that he's in, this paralyzed state that he's in. And he then physically breaks free of the vine and goes to do what he needs to do. The fight, of course, ends with Ivy being subdued and Team Batwoman takes her into custody and they head back to the bar, at which point Mary awakens as herself once again. And she reconciles with Ryan, Luke, and Sophie and explains that she remembers killing the guy in the woods. But Ryan tells her that it wasn't really her who did it, that it was Ivy. You know, because Ivy was ultimately to blame for the state she was in. Ryan tells Alice she knows Alice cares about Mary and only came back from running away to save her out of guilt for making her behave badly for the period of time that they were causing trouble together. Renee and Pam find themselves on a plane, or rather, Pam finds herself on a plane. Renee put herself there with Ivy as part of a negotiation deal that she brokered for Ivy's freedom under the condition that she be supervised by Renee and they're on their way to an island with no industry, so it can't, you know, poison the environment. It's called Coriana. And Ivy seems to be pleased with this after, like I said, they kind of argue, but they come to an understanding when Renee basically says, I did this for you. You're only free because of me. This isn't something I'm doing to you, you know? Uh, and it was just a, a good scene. Sophie and Ryan talk, and Ryan says she's still kind of in her head, despite Sophie having kissed her to sort of spur her to get out of her head, and they both have a chuckle over it. Jada, though, who expected the joy was a return to her after a certain period of time, which doesn't occur, tells the media that the recent menacing of Gotham by people possessing the items of Batman's rogues gallery is Batwoman's fault and demands that Batwoman turn herself in. Before the episode ends, we see that water from the dam, some of which did sort of rush into Gotham, though it wasn't the full amount that the dam was holding back, and has found its way, I guess, onto the ceiling of, or, or into the building where Marcus is being held and some water drips on him from a light fixture, causing him to wake up from his paralyzation from the compound that had paralyzed Ivy for all those years. And that's where the episode ends. This was a really great episode. This show has just been really great this season. This episode was particularly good. It massively moved the ball forward. It wrapped up some plot lines because, you know, this show in the past and other shows now have a tendency to drag plot lines on and on because the writers don't know what else to do it seems. So they take what they've come up with and they drag it out and drag it out and perpetuate it and perpetuate it. They didn't do that. They had a clear direction when they started the season. They've been moving in that direction. The pace has been good. It hasn't been drag, you know, draggy. It's, it's pretty much been point to point to point. They've been going along, you know, smoothly. And they actually managed to blend two separate major plot points into this episode in a way that didn't feel like they were detracting from one to get to the other. Like, okay, they're putting this moment in about this plot, but they're only doing it to slow down the other plot because they want to keep the other plot going. Shows tend to do that these days. This was not that. This was, hey, we're wrapping up this one story, so let's put some seeds in from the other story that's going to continue after this particular plot wraps up. So it gives you that sense that that very intense things are happening on multiple fronts and that Team Batwoman and Batwoman specifically are, are always have balls in the air. And other shows try to do this, but doesn't work because the various plots never get resolved. They just drag them out. And in this case, they're moving from plot to plot to plot, but they're wrapping up some of those plots as they go and blending. It was, it's, just, it's just really well done. And both plots are compelling. You know, it's, 
which again is rare. You, you'll have these shows that have multiple plots. One of them might be okay. The others are just bad and nobody cares. Unfortunately, the show about my favorite superhero ever, The Flash, is guilty of this. Not happening this season on Batwoman. It happened in previous seasons. Season one was kind of like that. Season two suffered from some of that because they had gone down some roads that I guess they didn't want to abandon. So they kind of wrapped them up and it, it made season two less than perfect. But this season has been great. And this episode was great. And when I say the plots are worthwhile, it's because they are. The, the whole concept of Marcus being Renee's sister, a uh, brother rather, is actually working. Like for some reason it didn't work with Alice and Kate. It did towards the end of season two when they started evolving Alice and making her less one dimensional and making her actually crave a family connection. It, at that point, it made sense. They never really made me believe that Kate cared about Alice, even though she said the lines. So I didn't really like that element, but I don't know. In this case, it seems to work. I don't know what the difference is. I really don't, but I, I like it better. And so I think it's cool that Marcus is Ryan's sister, a brother rather, I keep saying that. And I think it's cool that her mother is involved. And I think it's cool that they've made her mother a good person. Like in the beginning when she, they introduced her, it's like, oh, she's horrible. She's this horrible person. She's gonna be a one dimensional stupid villain during the season. And I'm bummed because it seemed like the season started out so well, but that's not what they did. They turned her, they, they, they ended up showing us that her motivation is really a good one and that she's behaving the way she's behaving because she's afraid of hurting Ryan. She's afraid something bad's going to happen to Marcus. She's just being a mom. She's just being a good person. And it's, I just, it's great because it makes me care about Marcus, even though he's, done bad things and will continue doing bad things because you know why he's doing it. He's messed up. And it makes me care about him because she cares about him. And I care about her because she cares about him and Ryan. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's impossible not to care about her. It's impossible not to care about Marcus. Now, of course we care about Ryan. So that's just very cool. Because the mark of a good show is when they make you care about the characters. And if they can make you care about the characters who are more, let's say, bad than anybody else or more morally ambiguous than others, who are the kind of villains or the antiheroes, if they can make you care about those people in addition to the heroes, they're doing something great. And let me tell you, I care about every character on this show. I feel their humanity in the, in the writing, in, the, in their actions, whether those actions are, you know, selfish, for example. Renee behaves very selfishly throughout this season, but she's, she's a good person. She loves Pam. She's, you know, a law enforcement officer who, you know, she upholds the law. She's not bringing the law. She's not going around doing criminal things. She's not killing people. She's, you know, she kind of lied a little bit to Team Batwoman and Alice, but she's a good person. She feels guilty about what she did to Ivy. She loves Ivy, so I care about her. I care about Ivy because Renee loves her, because she loves Renee, because she's doing what she's doing, because she believes she's fighting against wrongdoings, as Poison Ivy always had. So it's not at all difficult to sympathize with Poison Ivy and to care about her. So I, I care about Jada. I care about Renee. I care about Ivy. I care about Marcus because as I said, his mother cares about him. So that just in, makes you feel like, okay, if she cares about him and I care about her, then there must be something there. And I think there is, this guy is a victim, right? So I want him to be okay. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I want jada to be okay i want sophie to be okay i want renee to be okay i want ivy to be okay i want ryan to be okay i want alice to be okay very much luke too <laughs> you know so that's rare tv shows don't always 
have the ability to make you care about all the characters just because writing is sometimes uneven. They can't, they can't always make the, all of the characters that good, but they did it on this show. The good guys and the bad guys and the people in between. It's insane. <laughs> it's just insane. But I care about all those characters. I want each of those characters to be okay. I see the humanity in all of those characters. They seem real to me. And that's hard to do. So I look forward to the rest of the season. I love this show. I really hope it gets renewed for season four. I will be back next week with a review of that week's episode. Until then, I wish you peace and long life.